Hey, it's Mike again. I've got a lot to do. Using the instance properties of stair components, we have discussed the hierarchy of nested families and types for components in other chapters. Stairs follow the same structure. You can tab plus select through the stair to choose either the stair or the rail, but you have other options as well. By hovering over the side of the stair, you can choose just the treads or just the stringer. Both of, the, both of these options, both of these selection options, come with their own properties, but there are even more parameters available as instant properties of runs, landings, and supports. When the stair tool is activated, you can set the width of a run only after it has been created. If you tab plus select the run within a stair assembly, you can access the actual run width property and change it. To begin with riser and end with riser's properties are critical to integrating a stair with adjacent floor slabs. With the convert to sketch based stair, these parameters are available only in the type properties dialog box which means that you would need to create a new stair type if either of these conditions needs to be customized. For the standard component stairs, these properties can be found in the instance properties of each run. You will need to tab plus select the run within a stair instance to enable or disable these parameters, but it is ultimately more flexible to do this throughout your project. Another important group of instance properties is assigned to the stair supports. If you tab plus select a support for a component stair, you will see parameters including lower end cut and upper end cut in the properties palette. These can be assigned to vertical cut, horizontal cut, or perpendicular. Using component stairs and assemblies, stairs cannot be added to assemblies. See Chapter 20, Working in the Construction Phase, for more information about assemblies. Using the components for customized stairs. One of the main tenets of them is the ability to manage elements within a predictable category. However, it is not always practical for elements to maintain a strict taxonomy. In making the best use of Revit, do not always get hung up on how elements and tools are named or labeled. For example, you can use the railing tool to create a shading device, which is obviously not a railing. This may make it more challenging to schedule, label, and manage the properties of the objects. It, however, may give you the flexibility to deploy the tools for your project. This same concept applies to stairs. Do not overlook the nosing family, Pro, uh, the nosing profile family as a device for creating interesting shapes that complete the tread because the shape of the nosing is not limited to traditional nosing profiles. Any shape that needs to extend beyond the face of the tread is fair game to model with the nosing profile family. Just remember that you are limited to a single profile per, per tread and stair run. You will also want to pay particular attention to the insertion point of the nosing profile because the intersection of the reference planes coincides with the top of the tread and the face of the riser. In future figure, in a future figure, in these future figures, this particular one shows an example of a real stair that was designed to have each tread fabricated from a single plate of steel and then rolled to form the face of the riser above it. Here, each of these treads can be welded behind the lip of the tread above it. It is a fairly elegant idea that can be accomplished by using a custom nosing profile to create the, the appearance of a continuous tread. Look closely and you can see where the actual tread ends and where the nosing profile begins. Final line work can be adjusted or hidden if necessary when you are creating the details. In future figures, this particular one shows the stair in its final form using our custom profile, but the walls are hidden for clarity. If you would like to investigate this stair further, it is in Chapter 16 folder on the Rook's Companion website. It's called C16 Henry Step RVT. Let's take a peek. Let's take a quick peek. Henry Step. It's an RVT. It's a project. Example of a customized stair and railing. <laughs> Understanding the stringer. Stringers in Revit are good for creating a number of standard wood or steel conditions, and the right and left stringers may be customized with profiles. If you need a custom middle profile or a stringer that follows the railing but deviates from the standard left-right stringer location, use the railing tool. The, the stair will host this railing containing the custom stringer profile, or just the custom profile with no handrail. Notice in future figures that the last profile is not part of the traditional portion of the railing. Instead, this profile is used to indicate a custom stringer profile, but it has been assigned to the railing to maintain a particular relationship to the stairs. In future figures, we have isolated the railing from the stairs to illustrate the finished railing. The handrail, two glazed panels, and continuous panel panels on the custom stringer. 
This railing with a custom stringer profile is perfect for a multitude of stair conditions, straight, curved, or even a combination. This technique finishes off the stair nicely and exposes the structure in interesting ways. Although the stringer usually occurs to the left or right of the treads, this is certainly not always the case. In some situations, you will want to create a middle string use a custom, uh, using a custom profile. Just remember that this will be a railing that will be hosted by the stair and not even contain a handrail, just the profile of the stringer. In this case, the railing is still being hosted by the stairs, however, there is not any railing geometry above the tread. For component stairs, you can also use a custom profile for a stringer, but instead of using a railing family as we previously described, you can assign it to a support type to accomplish this. Accomplish this. Excuse me. Uh, you must first create a duplicate support type. As a final note about custom support profiles, you must ensure that the proper usage properties specified in the profile family when you are creating the shape. In the family editor, click the family category and parameters button in the ribbon and make sure the profile usage parameter is set to stair support. Using balusters as uh, tread supports, common tread shapes are not only are not the only type that the stair tool can use. So let's move directly to custom treads where we need to be a bit more inventive. This technique can either create a custom support element for the default treads or indicate the actual tread. But instead of the baluster being vertical, as always, it is going to be horizontal. This horizontal baluster will be used in conjunction with the default tread. This stat baluster may even completely envelop the tread. First, we need to discuss a few rules for creating a customized tread support for the default tread. Not every baluster needs a railing. If your baluster support is not going to be part of the actual railing, simply create a second railing that is hosted by the stairs. Sketching another path for your custom railing that only contains the tread support baluster can be accomplished in a few steps. The baluster family template needs to be used for the component that will act as the tread support, otherwise it cannot be associated to the railing. If you have a complex support element, it may be helpful to model the desired support element as a generic family. When you have finished nest this generic family into the baluster family, you, must, you may want to do this because the baluster templates have hardwired reference planes and parameters, which is fine if you are making a baluster that needs uh, to geometrically flex. But in some cases, we have found that these reference planes and parameters may cause your baluster to fail when you load it into the project as a result of the parameters flexing. By modeling the geometry elsewhere and nesting it, you avoid this hassle because it moves as a single component. Designating the level of detail is critical. Assigning smaller model elements to appear only when the detail level option of a view is set to find will result in much faster graphics regeneration, view panning, and model rotation. So if you're nesting one component into another family, the detail that you are assigning at the deepest level will be respected through nesting. Once the component is complete, you can set it, you can nest it into a baluster template as shown in the future figures. If necessary, it is also possible to assign parameters to the dimensions in the nested configuration. The completed stairs are shown in two different configurations. Many configurations are possible once you correctly define a single stair type. If you would like to investigate this stair further, it is in the chapter 16 folder on the book's webpage and the file is called C16 Angle Support Stair.
custom baluster support might be modeled to contain the real balusters that are intended to support railings. This can simplify and shorten modeling time. In the example shown in the figures, the baluster support geometry also contains the railing elements on both the right and left sides. If you would like to investigate this further, it is in the Chapter 16 folder on the book's webpage. The file is called C16 Support Tread. The previous support baluster can be brought together with a custom profile for the center strainer, handrails, and glazed panels to form a complete stair and railing design. You can download this example from Chapter 16 folder on the book's webpage. The file is called C16 Center, center Baluster Support. This is the elegance of Reddit. Controlling the baluster supports. Do not forget to control the number of baluster supports per tread. Reddit has an easy way to accomplish this through the railing option. Use baluster per thread on stairs found in the edit baluster plates the dialog box. Once you have begun to experiment with creating balusters as tread supports for stairs, <coughs> excuse me, you will notice you have options for making more complete and finished conditions. Start and end posts are useful and can help complete the structure of your custom railing and baluster system, particularly if you want to properly anchor and connect your custom stair and railing. These elements shown in the following figures are the start and end posts uh, to anchor a custom railing and a baluster that will serve as the tread within integrated support. It builds on the previous example of using baluster as a support element for a tread. To finish the stair, you need to create start and end posts that anchor the stairs. With the previous handrail joint exercise, you will want to model the bulk of the custom stair with the custom railing. Then, you will export the stair parts for importing into the baluster template or the generic model template that will be nested into the baluster template. Figure, um, the, the, the um, subsequent figures show the results after the start and end post and custom baluster families are applied to the completed stair design. When it all comes together, the results can be elegant and interesting. All of this is available through the default stairs tool. You can download this stair from the Chapter 16 folder on the book's webpage. It is called C16 Tube Stair. That's what this one's called. That was what that one was called. Uh, this is what this one's called. Yeah, this one's called a tube stair. Now, let's go one step further. There's no reason that the baluster support element needs to exactly conform to the shape of the tread. And there's no reason that the support element cannot contain the actual baluster that it is intended, that is intended to support the handrail. Take a look at the support element. Not only does it contain the support element, but the support element has been modeled to exceed the shape of the tread that will be modeled by the stairs tool. Keep in mind that we have modeled the support element as a generic model and then nested it into baluster post template, a, bal a baluster post template. Again, this keeps the baluster unified so it is not affected by the built-in reference planes and parameters. Once this custom baluster post is loaded into the project, associate it with the stair and its railings. Remember, to select the use baluster tre per tread on stairs option and select one baluster per tread when finished, the default tread is an inlay to the more complete tread support. In more complex conditions, it may be desirable, desirable to envelope the entire tread with support geometry. Doing so will allow you to create complex tread shapes that are not dependent on the default tread and use the functionality of the stair and railing objects to properly locate, rotate, and elevate each of your custom treads. If you want to examine this, examine this stair further, 
check out the C16 Curved Tread Support RVT in the book's companion website. Once the model upgrades, it'll become evident. This is this stair. This stair shows an example using this technique. The tread support elements have been modeled using blends in order to sweep under the metal plate while changing the direction from vertical to angle. This will accommodate the angle pipe rail that will support the stairs. Treads, ow, some uh, treads come together in a particular interesting stair and railing configuration. There's obviously a more conventional outer railing for this stair, but the inner railing does not have, the any, does not have any elements that occur at hand height. The entire inner railing exists to support the baluster supports, which in turn support the default treads. The end post is being used to anchor the entire structure to the second level. You can find this example, C16 highlights, in the chapter 16 folder of the book's webpage. The large structural element is actually a baluster that has been designed as the end post. Creating stairs with other tools. Creating stairs with other tools. We have discussed a number of different ways the parts of stairs can be manipulated and created. As we approach alternate modeling techniques with the goal of creating elegant, elegant stairs, understand that the metadata may not correspond to the geometry. This is usually the only option to complete a design where there are limitations to the default tools while avoiding the need to resort to strictly 2D representation. Because the metadata, the information part of BIM, is not being coordinated properly, you will want to take particular care with regard to tagging and scheduling. A solid spiral wall can be used as a railing or a support element, can easily be created in this family editor and then associated with the stairs as a stair post. Of course, this geometry could also be created as an in-place family, but then you would lose the advantage of being able to quickly and easily relocate the stair in your project, excuse me, or create a multi-story condition. In figure, or I should say, in the figures that are going to follow, you can see part of the spiral stair with default treads and supports modeled as balusters with the railing tool. Rather than create the spiral wall as an in-place family under the stair, we modeled the form as a baluster post in order to associate it with the beginning of the railing being used for the support brackets. To make sure the path is correct, we copied the run line of the stair into the post family named spiral start post now, you can use the pa this path, you can use this path as you create each of the blended sweeps, creating only one swept blend per path. In this case, the blends are being modeled so that there is a three inch or 75 millimeter gap between the underside of the default treads. Subsequent figures will show what you get when it all comes together. The swept blend has been created in a post template. This post is then loaded into the project environment and associated with the railing type named support baluster that contains the baluster definition with the support brackets named custom baluster. This is also a useful technique if you have to create walls that need to follow either side of the stair. If the condition exists only once, you may opt to create this as an in-place component. If this occurs more than once, or it might be rotated and relocated as well as occur at many levels, we recommend that you create this as part of the stair and railing definition. Then it will be easier to maintain relationships throughout the project 
To investigate the stair, download the C16 concentric stair from the Chapter 16 folder on the book's website. And this is what this stair is going to look like when it opens. That's this stair. That's this stair. Creating multi-story stairs. <clears throat> Lots of stories. Lots of stories, right? Lots. So many stories out there. Many stairs that, architect, that architects make traverse multiple stories. There are many stairs that architect, architects make traverse multiple stories. The difficulty, P, the difficulty in a repeating pattern is that some floors may not have the exact floor floor heights. With the multi-story stairs tool, stairs can be associated with selected levels regardless of consistent vertical dimensions. As a multi-story stair is created, sections are categorized into different groups based on the level heights. Stairs grouped with the same level height can now be edited together, even allowing changes in stair type. For stair runs that need alternative configurations, they can be ungrouped with this unpin tool. However, if the stair is added back to the group, all of its changes will be overridden by the features of the group it is joining. To transform a stair to multi-story stair, switch to an elevation view that shows the stair and levels together. Select the stair to assess uh, the select levels tool and modify stairs palette. This will trigger a sketch mode where you will use the connect levels tool to choose the levels where the stair will run. Using the control key as a modifier, each level can be added to a selection set and the shift key will allow subtraction. Once all the levels have been selected, finish the sketch. To complete the operation, additional stair runs will be generated to the connected levels, regardless of their heights. Keep in mind that stairs landings will be the initial alignment. Adjustments can be made by unpinning the stairs from the multi-story star group. Stair group. Annotating stairs. Stair treads are annotated using the stair tread riser number labeled as the tread number tool on the annotate tab of the ribbon. You can use this tool from any plan view. When this model is activated, place a string of labels on any component stair by simply selecting the stair run. The tread number annotation can be placed at the sides, the middle, or the quarter points along the run width. To customize the tread number annotation, select the tread number instance that you have already placed in a view and you will find additional parameters in the properties palette, such as number size, orientation, and display rule. You can also change the start number in the options bar. The arrow and label for stairs are controlled independently of the stair type for component stairs. When you select individual components of a stair, you will notice that the arrow and label can be selected separately. When they are selected, you can change the type of annotation in the type selector and have additional parameters in the properties palette. Because the stair path annotation for component stairs is a separate element, it can simply be deleted when you do not need it in a view. To replace the annotation, go to the annotate tab in the ribbon and from the symbol panel, click the stair path button and pick a stair to apply to the annotation. Finally, the cut mark that displays the stairs with the stairs in a plan can be slightly customized. The settings for cut marks are stored in yet another system family that is nested within the component stair type properties. In the properties Project Browser, navigate to Family Stairs, Stair Cut, Mark, to find the types available in the default project template. Double-click any of these types to observe the properties for customizing the cut mark. To assign a cut mark type value, open the Type Properties dialog box for a component stair type and look at the graphics heading. Creating railings. Railings can be created anywhere in a project. They can be placed on stairs, ramps, floors, and roofs, but they are not hosted elements. The railing does not need to be dependent on a host object to exist. For the architecture tab in the ribbon, from it, the, uh, you will find the railing tool in the circulation panel. Click the railing flyout and you will see sketch path and place on stair ramp. You would use the sketch path tool to create a railing on a flat surface such as a slab edge. When the place on stair ramp tool is activated, you must select the stair or a ramp and the placed railing will follow the slope of the stair ramp. 
If you choose the second option, notice in the contextual ribbon that you have the option to specify whether the railing will be orientated above the tread or the stringer. You can always modify this after the railing has been placed. Before we create a railing, we should explain the placement of a railing on a stair a little further. When you place the stair on stair ramp, when you use the, when you place, when you use the place on stair ramp method, the railing path is automatically assigned to the edge of the stair that represents the outside face of the tread and the inside face of the stringer if one is defined. The railing orientation is simply flipped to either side of this path toward the tread or toward the stringer. In the properties palette, you will find a parameter named offset from path that is set negative one inch, negative 25 millimeters. By default, most rail and ballast for families are developed along the center axis. Therefore, the offset from path value pushes the railing to one side or the other of the railing's path. To modify this orientation after a railing has been placed, select the railing and either click the flip arrow that appears on the view window or right click and select flip orientation from the context menu. This, uh, the offset from path value will maintain the same, no matter, will remain the same no matter what, no matter what, <laughs> which, why, no matter which way the railing is orientated. When you click the railing button from the circulation panel on the architectural ribbon, you will no longer be given a dialog box asking you to pick a railing type. Now, those choices are simply made with a type selector. From the drop-down list in the type selector, you can choose any railing type defined in the project. For stairs only, you can define the placement of the railing to be along the treads or the stringers. Where would you need to use sketch to where would you need to use these sketch segment options for railings? You can use them to customize a railing that is in place on a host. For example, you may need to continue a railing from a stair run onto a flat landing. Follow these steps to try this. Download and open the C16 Railing Tool RVT or C16 Railing Tool Metric RVT from this book's webpage. This, after it's upgraded, is what this railing looks like. There's a simple stair from level one up to level two in the railing, and a railing has been placed on the stair. Open the level two floor plan, select the railing along the outer edge of the stair, and click Edit Path on the Mode panel in the Contextual ribbon. In the Draw panel of the Contextual ribbon, select the Line tool and draw a line from the end of the existing railing sketch, as shown. Include a short segment extending in the direction of the existing sketch line, and then draw the next segment to the perpendicular edge of the floor landing. Select both new sketch segments you drew in step three, and from the options bar, set the slope option to five. But this is the best way to ensure consistent results with manually sketch railing paths. Click the green check mark in the contextual ribbon to finish the sketch and activate the default three view to observe your results. <laughs> the results are in. Creating a custom railing. Now that we have reviewed the major components of stairs and railing, let's create a rail. The rail you are going to make is a stainless steel cable railing with flat steel dock stock posts. The completed railing will look like figure 16.61, which I'm going to be showing you in a few seconds. You can adapt the workflow you are going to complete to create just about any typical railing. To begin, you'll need to build some of the components of the railing. I'm going to show you exactly uh, what it looks like. If I can find it.
Just give me one moment because we have a, I have a, 15 says 16. I don't believe that's, it says railing. This one says rail. One says chapter 15, one says chapter 16. It's all the unlucky number 13. And that's what this railing looks like. Creating glass railings with a curtain wall tool. Most challenging railings often require exceptions to the rules. This usually means you are trying to manually locate balusters or use panels that are not part of the routine railing definition. If you tried to define each of these exceptions as a different railing type, your project would be overflowing with railing types. The best solution for these types of railings is to diverge from the railing tool and use the curtain wall tool. By using curtain walls, you will be able to create railings by modeling. The balusters and panels inside the curtain panel family template. Another nice feature about this technique is that the railing is a room-bounded element because it is actually a wall that makes this perfect for mezzanine conditions that require area calculations, certainly more efficient than creating a redundant room separation line. <coughs> Start by creating a single panel using the curtain panel template. The family may contain not only the panel for the railing, but also the balusters. Once you have loaded this panel into your project, you can create curtain panels, curtain walls, with predefined panel widths. Because curtain panels allow you to unpin predefined grids, as well as create other grid locations, you'll be able to quickly and easily make exceptions to the rules that you previously defined, and create several unique baluster locations, specific to the installation. When you are creating railings as curtain walls, be sure to filter your schedules accordingly to pre prevent these railings from being included in your curtain wall schedules. If you want to download this example project, it is in the Chapter 16 folder on the book's webpage and is named C16 Curtain Wall Railing. And that's this railing. I think you can see them all. I see these at malls, right? All kind of like that. Reminds me of a Short Hills Mall, Warden Taylor. These outside the box techniques should give you some great ideas for making custom railings faster and more interesting than you could ever have imagined. Using the railing tool for other objects. Currently, Revit software does not have a specific tool to allow components to be quickly and easily distributed along a user-defined path. In some cases, you can use line-based families, but these do not work in curved conditions. You can also experiment with adaptive components in the conceptual masking environment, but that could be too complicated for a simple repeating element. In the meantime, consider using the railing tool to, uh, to, re to distribute elements along paths for a variety of uses besides just for railings. Carefully identifying customized model elements in this chapter, we make a few suggestions to use tools designated to create one type of element to generate other types of model elements. We highly recommend you take care in identifying such elements so that they may be clearly understood by other people who might use your model. If not clearly identified, these elements could cause trouble in BIM applications, such as 3D coordination, quantity surveying, and estimating as well as where specification databases are connected to the design model. Here are some suggestions for identification. Use the assembly code property to assign an appropriate system description, provide a unique and clearly recognizable type name value, provide a clear description in the type comments field. Whatever method you choose to identify these types of customized elements, be sure to indicate the method in your project's execution plan. 
whether it is a BIM execution plan, project execution plan, or similar document, this type of communication and collaboration is essential to the reduction of errors in rework. When using railing functionality outside of a railing to distribute elements along paths, keep in mind these three rules. You will probably want to nest your family into a baluster family template rather than creating it directly as a baluster. This is because the existing parameters within the baluster family can cause your geometry to fly apart if it needs to move up and down as a single element. Do not expect your nested element to schedule a tag. If you need the elements to schedule a tag individually, you probably want to place them individually or use another technique, such as a line-based family. Do not share parameters of nested families in an attempt to schedule. Your element will not schedule properly. In some cases, you will want the railing family to have associated profiles like the shading device. The railing profiles are used to create the shading thins, and the balusters are the support elements. Using railings to quickly and evenly distribute the components along a path is great during uh, design and allows for quick iteration. Before you decide to use railings in this fashion, consider whether a simple array can perform the same function. Outdoor elements such as lampposts are particularly appropriate for distributed placement. In the example, a lamppost can be nested into a baluster family. Once this lamppost has been nested in a baluster family, you will be able to create a custom railing with the lamp designated as a baluster. This will allow you to quickly and easily distribute lampposts along a sketch at specified intervals that can be modified as a parameter. So, for example, if the lampposts were originally distributed at 60 feet on since the 60 feet centers, you could quickly redefine it to occur on 40 foot, 12 meter intervals. You can use this for any repetitive elements that must be placed on center and evenly distributed along a path. Other uses might include pipe bollards, and outdoor planting. Even a design pass at light rail tracks, including rail cars, can be distributed along paths. In this case, the rail sleepers or balusters, and profiles are used to create the rails and rail bed. The model rails are easy too. The vertical supports and rail cars are balusters, and the suspended track is the rail profile. This file can be downloaded from the chapter, C, chapter 16 folder on the book's web page. Look for the C16 monorail and a railway railing file. Real-world scenario, important best practices. Here are some best practices to consider with regard to creating complex stairs and railings. Do not forget to nest your family components whenever possible and appropriate. This will keep the components together when associated with some other template that contains hardwired parameters and reference planes. It will also save you time during design changes and iterations. Do not forget to use examples to base your system on if you struggle with creating the stairs in this chapter. If you get stuck, you can download the sample stairs from this, file, this chapter's files and use them for a starting point when creating your custom stair. Just remember, it is usually easier to build and test a custom stair or railing in a sample project first, then copy and paste or use transfer project standards to get the custom stair or railing from the test project to your actual project. Download sample files for this document to book's web page. You will probably want to copy your custom stairs and railings to an easy to access project that contains several finished examples since they cannot be kept as family components. Do not forget that the level of detail and visibility are crucial to your file if you care about graphics, refresh times, and printing. As you model the components of your custom stairs and railings, assign appropriate orientation and level of detail, coarse, medium, and fine. 
you will notice a difference when you pan and rotate your model. Take care to filter schedules. Using a curtain wall as a railing may have certain advantages, but you also want to make sure your curtain wall schedules are filtered to exclude these types of elements. Overall, be careful when reaching into your bag of tips and tricks. Be careful when reaching into your bag of tips and tricks. You need to weigh the cost of implementing a new process, implementing a new process, against the cost of doing what is familiar. I'll reiterate that. You need to out, you need to weigh the cost of implementing a new process against the cost of doing what is familiar. Make sure you are maintaining a balance between predictability and efficiency. There are frequently two extremes that you need to avoid. Excuse me, one extreme to the other. Out of the frying pan into the fire. High predictability, low efficiency. Most people will grasp the solution that you intend to implement. They will fully understand the technology and technique but they will also quickly realize that managing design changes and iteration will be highly manual and time consuming. And the rest of the team will doubt your leadership and understand and, and understanding of the technology and processes. High efficiency, low predictability. The solution will be very efficient to manage the design, but only you or a few team members will understand what you've created. Everyone else on the team will resist making changes to your creation out of fear that they will break it. So what's important with creating interesting and innovative stairs and railings is that you manage to strike a balance between these two extremes. Just remember these four simple characteristics. Beneficial, not just to you, but to the project team. Efficient, implementation and changes that are fast and predictable. Elegant. Understand elegance, understood by the team and by any new team members, repeatable, can be used on many projects. If you cannot remember these guidelines, the handy acronym BEER should help. When you are not sure which solution is the best one to follow, your team will tend to gravitate to whatever allows them to have a beer at the end of the day. Beneficial, efficient, elegant, repeatable, repeatable, beneficial, efficient, elegant, <laughs> repeatable. In other words, whatever allows them to decompress, re-energize, and come back to work the next day refreshed, focused, and enthusiastic will ultimately win out. And keep in mind that this principle is not just important to stairs and railings or Revit or Ben, but is important to having an interesting life. The bottom line, understanding the key components of stairs and railings. Having a complete understanding of the components of stairs is important. You do not want to set about breaking the rules until you understand how best and when those rules can be broken. Master it. What are the essential parts of stairs? Understand the different stair tools and apply them to custom designs. Designing in a spreadsheet is hard. Step back and consider what, are you, what you are trying to accomplish. If you look at the components that make up stairs, you will see some interesting opportunities. Master it. How would you create a continuous tread that, is, that was not monolithic? What would you do if you wanted to create a custom stringer? Our baluster is always vertical and used to support handrails. What if your particular stair just cannot be modeled in the stair tool? Design railings and use the railing tool for other model elements. From model patterns to geometric intricacy, there is a lot that can be created with the building tool. There's also a lot that can be created with the railing tool. When this does not work, look to the curtain wall for railings. That can contain space and allow balusters to, con con to be conveniently Unlocked. Master it. Why would you not use a railing to manage repetitive relationships? What if you need to accurately distribute geometry along the path? Implement best practices. Beer. There are specific best practices when creating custom stairs and railings. Pay a test attention to nesting geometry. 
maintain the right level of detail and filtering schedules so that metadata ends up in the right place. Excuse me. Master it. Is it possible to create solutions that are too efficient? Is it? What is the big deal with detail levels? Finally, what is the most important thing to remember when creating an elegant workaround 